Welcome to church. I have to tell you something. I love Christmas. Love it. Love it. Love it. I love the snow. I love the family and friends getting together. I love the decorating. I love the Christmas baking, celebrating the birth of Jesus, all of it. I have always loved Christmas. When the kids were younger, we used to play Christmas music and drink hot chocolate and do the whole family time thing, decorating the tree. But as I got older, that changed. My very festive daughter has grown up and moved away, and the guys, they don't seem to be all that much into decorating. So now, I play Christmas music, I drink hot chocolate, and I decorate the tree by myself. But I do set aside a pile of special decorations with the boys' names on them. You know, like the ones that they made in kindergarten that are laminated with a picture of them on it that got sent home from Sunday school? So this is what Christmas decorating looks like in our house now. I say, hey guys, here's your pile of decorations. Put them on the tree when you get a chance. Not everyone enjoys the Christmas routine as much as I do. Last year, I asked my boys if anybody wanted to set up the, the manger scene slash Christmas village. I have this mini set of ornaments that make up a Christmas scene that I set on my china cabinet every year and the boys used to love helping. So last year I said, hey, does anybody want to help me set up the Christmas manger scene? And one of the boys, my youngest, he's 16 now, he's little mom, I'll do it. And I was like, oh, finally, somebody wants to help me decorate. And I give him this baggie full of manger scene slash Christmas village parts. And this, this right here, this is what I return to. It is a pile of, of decorations like literally the horses the angels the upside down baby jesus in a pile and a teenage boy with a big grin on his face so i know not everyone enjoys the festivities of christmas the same way that i do and i understand christmas can sometimes be stressful and busy and chaotic and our list grows longer and longer and we start spending more money and we have these events that we need to be a part of and if we're not careful we may find ourselves just surviving Christmas. It's like the new year comes. We're like, yes, I did it. I survived another Christmas season. I sent the cards, I bought the gifts, I did the visits, I fed the family, check, 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 check. But it doesn't have to be that way. Our series this month is called Surviving Christmas. And throughout the month of December, we're looking at different people from the very first Christmas and learning from their stories what we can do to prevent going into survival mode this Christmas. Last week, we took a look at Joseph and how his story can teach us to manage stress that comes with Christmas. This week, we're taking a look at Mary, the mother of Jesus. In the Christmas story, everything seems so peaceful. No stress, warm evening out on the farm, beautiful family moment. And we sing songs like Away in a Manger and Silent Night. Now, Mary had a newborn baby. <clears throat> Have you ever spent the night with a newborn baby? You've got silent night, and then you've got night with a newborn baby. They're not the same thing. You don't have silent nights when you have a newborn baby. You have soothe the baby, rock the baby, feed the baby, change the baby. It can be stressful. And here's Mary, a teenager, giving birth to the savior of the world 90 miles away from home. Right from the moment that the angel appears to Mary, her life changed. There would have been stressful moments that first Christmas. Let's take a look at how Mary handles the stress the very first Christmas. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who is said to have been unable to conceive is in her sixth month. No word from God will ever fail. 
I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your words to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left. When the angel came to Mary and said, Greetings, you are highly favored, and uh, you're going to have a baby. What thoughts would have went through Mary's mind? We know that she was deeply troubled when the angel came to her. We know that because we just read it. And she had questions. I'm a virgin. How can this happen? But Mary continued to honor and serve God. Mary, she could have said no. She could have said, no way, uh-uh. See, the law at the time was that if someone who was engaged, if a woman who was engaged was thought to be unfaithful, the man could break up the engagement and have the woman stoned to death. Mary had a lot to think about. She could have argued with the angel. She could have said, uh, well, what about Joseph? I don't think he's gonna be very happy about this. What if he breaks off our engagement? She could have said, don't you know what could happen to me? But that's not how Mary responded. Mary was willing to do whatever God was calling her to do. She stayed focused on the things of God. She said, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. What is God asking from you this holiday season? In the midst of what is sometimes a very stressful, very busy or even chaotic time, we need to continue to serve God and to honor Him. Avoid survival mode this Christmas by focusing on the things of God. There's something else that you can do to help survive Christmas this year. And although these specific words are not used in the Christmas story, we definitely see it with Mary. Mary was flexible. And at first, I wasn't sure if I wanted to include this in my message, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized, wow, like this is real and it definitely applies to me. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized that a lack of flexibility is a major cause for stress over the holidays. Being flexible is to be able to bend without breaking. So if this is your plan, this is your goal, this is your desire right here, but your reality is different and you want to survive without breaking, then you need to be flexible. Full confession here, I am not very good at being flexible when it comes to Christmas. I want my reality to be picture perfect. I always plan to have everything completely ready for my Christmas dinner, like a half hour before, and I have it all in the oven and it's keeping warm so that I have time to go do my hair and get dressed up nice. And when the kids were young, I got them like all cleaned up and maybe convinced my husband to wear a Christmas tie. So that when we sat around the Christmas table, everything looked picture perfect. Well, nowadays, having everyone around the table at the same time is a challenge and they're not wearing Christmas ties. Maybe, just maybe, one of the boys will brush their hair. Otherwise, we're looking at sweatshirts, dreadlocks, ripped jeans. On the outside, I look flexible, but on the inside, I am like breaking. But really, Christmas is a celebration of Jesus' birth. It's not a Hallmark movie, and it doesn't have to be picture perfect. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. Mary was a really young lady when she met with the angel, still a teenager. I'm sure that she would have had plans, and she would have had goals, and she would have had desires. She never would have planned to be pregnant before she was married to Joseph. She might have planned a trip to Bethlehem, but not nine months pregnant on the back of a donkey. She would have planned to have her firstborn child in her family home, surrounded by people that she loved. But she gave birth to her firstborn in a barn or a cave, surrounded by animals. Not her plan, not her goal, was not on her Christmas to-do list. Yet it was her reality, and Mary was flexible. Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9 say, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. 
For the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. God has plans, and they are higher than our plans. Being flexible, bending without breaking, you know what that does? That makes room for God's plans. We know now, looking back, Jesus being born in the manger was extremely important, and it represents a Savior who is humble and approachable and accessible. He didn't come to earth as a pampered, privileged ruler. He came as Jesus in a manger, and Mary was flexible. God's ways are higher than our ways. I once had a young lady in our youth program who was upset. I mean, she was really being hard on herself. She had just graduated high school and she didn't know what she was going to do next. And she said, I don't have a plan. I don't have a goal. I don't know what I want to do. And this young person thought that she was in a really bad place. But I said to her, I know you feel like you're in a bad place right now, but you're actually in a really good place. You are wide open for whatever God wants to use you for right now. You are flexible, you're available, and that's a good thing. Some people are so planned and so organized that they don't leave room for the things that God might be calling them to do. We need to learn to be flexible. Maybe things are. It's gonna look a little bit different for you this year. Maybe you can't afford that gift that you had your heart set on giving to someone. Maybe not everyone that you love is going to be around the Christmas table. Maybe you don't get to go where you wanted to go for the holidays. Maybe your reality isn't going to be picture perfect. But we need to follow the example of Mary and be flexible. We need to honor God and we need to continue to serve Him. There's something else that Mary did that was and is extremely powerful when it comes to surviving what might otherwise be stressful, busy, or even chaotic Christmas season. Mary worshiped God. In the midst of everything, Mary takes a time out to worship and praise God. You can find it in Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 56. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is His name. His mercy extends to those who fear Him from generation to generation. This is called Mary's song. Jesus isn't even born yet, and she is in faith praising God for what He is going to do. And then Mary goes on, and she starts listing all of the things that God has already done for her people. And she says, He has performed mighty deeds with His arms. He has brought down rulers with their throne from their thrones. But He has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things. He has helped His servant Israel. Mary worshipped God. Worshipping God is a great way to keep the chaos out of Christmas and to keep Christ in it. And the truth is that every time that we worship God, it shifts our focus from what is going on around us and it invites Him into that moment. Worship for Mary in that moment was a song, a song of thanks and a song of praise. What is worship going to look like for you this Christmas? Is it taking time to pray? Listening to praise and worship music? Is it digging into the Word of God? There are so many ways to worship. To shift our focus from what's going on around us and invite Christ into that moment. Do you want to avoid going into survival mode this Christmas? As we continue to prepare for Christmas Day and all the activities that surround us, let's remember the next couple of weeks what Mary did on the first Christmas. What were her survival techniques? Let's do what Mary did and continue to serve God. Ask ourselves, what is God asking me to do this holiday season? How can I honor God this Christmas? And be flexible. We're not living in a Hallmark movie. It's okay if things are not picture perfect. That's the reality of celebrating Jesus' birth in the real world. And set aside time to worship so that you can shift your focus from the things around you and invite Christ into the holiday season.